More GPU price drops for AMD, one of the largest banks to ever fail has done so. Fortnite's done with certain versions of Windows, new micro centers, and we're saying goodbye to the RTX 30 series for real this time. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, March 13th, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about new GPU price drops that are coming in different regions. We've talked about this in previous episodes of hot news that the 7900 XT from AMD just continues to have bad sales and they continuously are incentivizing you to pick one up. In America, it's been that they dropped it to $800 and in the UK, it's down to 800 pounds, Plus they've added in The Last of Us Part 1 to help sweeten the pot for your incentive. And now it looks like over in China, the GPU is getting dropped even more. The vast armor Starry Sky 7900 XT, as pictured here, looking mighty fine, is getting dropped down $150 down below MSRP. Now it's not a direct one-to-one -one conversion to the United States dollar, but this would mean effectively if this type of price drop came to the US, we'd be looking at something like a $750 7900 XT. AMD continues having a hard time selling these. You do not typically see sales on GPUs this early. While it might seem to be normal to have graphics cards get cheaper right now, it's not precedented by Nvidia on their side and it's not precedented by AMD on their side if units are actually moving and it looks like that's not happening. But if you want a unit to move, well, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Silverstone, because they have their Shark Force fans, which are gonna be perfect for moving air in whatever system you want to put them in. Whether you want full traditional RGB or just a classy black look. They have them in 120, 140, and 160 millimeter varieties, with the 140 millimeter being the brand new addition to their lineup. And the Shark Force fans are based on Olympic swimmers who have shark skin like swimsuits back in the late 2000s, which allowed them to break all sorts of records. Silverstone taking that design principle and bringing it to fans to help move the air a little bit better, just like an Olympic swimmer would move through water. They're all designed for lower noise and higher performance. And the brand new 140 millimeter supports a speed rate range of zero to 2200 RPM. And they have a unique three phase six pole design which allows for smoother quieter operation compared to most single phase four pole designs that you find in other fans. And they're all equipped with reliable and durable fluid dynamic bearings to make sure that it's going to last as long as you need it to. So if you're looking to move some air in your PC, check out the link in the video description. Silverstone Shark Force, the 120, 140 or 160 mil with the 140 being the latest edition. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. And let's talk about some money that's been moving in the market with Silicon Valley Bank. This happened on Friday with Silicon Valley Bank being shut down by regulators. And typically in hot news, we don't necessarily discuss financial news. We had that crypto stonk segment. However, Silicon Valley Bank does apply to a broad portfolio of tech industry companies. So I thought it relevant to put it here in hot news, but in case you want a deep dive from somebody who's actually qualified to speak on the financial side of this, I'll have a link in the video description to Kyla Scanlon's video, which is a great breakdown on the exact situation, how it led to this. But essentially the bank became insolvent, not due to a lack of assets, but due to a lack of accessible assets because they put their money into investments that are not gonna mature for several years. And then there was a run on the bank where they could not get enough assets as quickly. Therefore, they are liquid. Therefore, regulators had to step in and the FDIC is now managing all of the assets to make sure that they're doled out properly. However, at the time of recording, there was no mention of a buyout by any particular party involved. And it's not yet known whether or not the FDIC or the federal government is going to allow for all of the assets of the depositors to be returned to them. But some of the depositors who had money in Silicon Valley Bank are Roku and Roblox. In case you were wondering, Roku had about 25%, 26% of their cash being held in SVB. And at the time, Roku doesn't know if they're gonna get their money back. I'm gonna make a joke here, not taking light of the situation, taking light of Roku, just specifically because they still have 74% of their cash assets. This is what you get for buying Quibi. <laughs> Roblox also saying that they have about 5% of their $3 billion in cash held at the bank, which $3 billion in cash is how much Roblox has? That's obscene. And with all of this, the FDIC is trying to keep employees of SVB employed for the next 45 days. And allegedly there's an auction underway for the assets to sell it off. However, the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is saying that they are not going to bail out the bank and kind of the time for that is a little too late. However, it's not just assets that SVB had. They were also a payroll processor, which is leaving a 
lot of tech startups not being able to meet payroll, regardless of how much assets were being held at the bank, they are not able to process the money in the way that they did. Etsy saying that merchant payment because of this is going to be delayed and that they're looking into other payment processors in order to get their money to the merchants who sell on Etsy. But there is a fear of wider ramifications throughout the tech startup industry. According to some people, this could be an extinction level event for specific tech startups because the FDIC, the federal government, does not ensure any amount over $250,000 where a lot of these companies were VC based, venture capital based. So they had millions of dollars held in a specific bank and now they are not insured on the vast majority of their assets. I've seen ranges between 93 and 97% of the assets that SVB held were not actually insured by the FDIC because they were so large in number. So why Combinator, who's very big in the tech startup space, is calling on Congress to act to make sure at the very least, even if the bank is not bailed out, the amount of money that is held by SVB is going to be guaranteed for the depositors, not necessarily for the stockholders and keeping the company afloat, but rather making sure that the people who held their assets there are going to return that because the issue is not that SVB didn't have the money. The issue is that they didn't have the money at the time of the bank run. So the assets are still there. The bonds that they put the money into just need to mature and then you can collect it. This is the whole situation. It does not look to be a symptom of wider bank irregulation and dysregulation and dysfunction in the entire economy. It just appears to be a very specific situation. However, it likely will have ramifications down the line. Let me know if you have anybody who's affected by the SVB fallout, whether it be in the payroll processing, the company that you work for, whether or not they're able to access their cash. Let me know down below in the comments, but you know who's not going to lose your money? Reese, because he's here to save you money with UFD deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals on the internet. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend because we have a great start to this week's deals with things like the Western Digital Black SN770 one terabyte NVMe SSD, currently going for only $56.99, which is $73 off. And then secondly, we have the Acer Nitro XV271 z which is a 27 inch 1080p 280 hertz refresh rate monitor with hdr 400 and amd FreeSync premium going for only 199.99 which is 170 dollars off and then lastly we have the amd ryzen 5 5600x which is a 6 core 12 thread cpu which last featured on uft deals at 190 dollars which is now only 156 dollars and 63 cents which is 49 percent off and those are the deals you can find these and more in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers thanks reese those were great deals but you know where you can find a great tech deal typically micro center and it turns out that they're going to be opening up three more stores indianapolis is the only announced one of the three and it's going to be opening up on june 23rd of this year with the two further ones to be announced and coming to open in 2025 i've seen micro center's account on tiktok just mercilessly teasing anybody who wants to know where the other two locations are i have high doubts that's going to be here in pittsburgh i could potentially see them opening up one in florida but what is very clear from Micro Center is that they have a concise vision for how they're opening their stores. And so they are doing it with extreme caution and extreme reliability to make sure that whatever market they're entering into, the demand is there to sustain the business for years and decades to come, because that's their plan, not to necessarily expand as quickly as possible, but to expand as reliably as possible, which I have to respect, even if I want a Micro Center closer to me. Where do you want this Micro Center? Sound off down below in the comments. And you cannot sound off on Fortnite anymore if you happen to be on Windows 7 and Windows 8. Epic Games announcing that they are removing support for the Battle Royale on those two operating systems as of Chapter 4 Season 2. Epic Games gave this announcement back in December of 2022, saying that this day would come as soon as this chapter and season launched, and it's true that it actually happened. The game is no longer supported on those two operating systems because of the fact that Microsoft doesn't even support these operating systems anymore. They quoted the fact that there's security risk reasons because they're no longer receiving security updates from Micro Center. There's also the reason that the legacy OS don't support all of the features that they want to utilize moving forward and the development time for an operating system that is a small subsect of people who are still playing it is just not worth the investment. So they're going to be moving on to the platforms that people are actually playing on. And I want to play Fortnite on this monitor. Thank you. Announcing their Mobius 48 inch OLED gaming monitor, which happens to look fantastic. If I do say so myself, I'm talking about it because thank you, highly known in the gaming monitor industry this first OLED coming from them has a pretty decent spec sheet. 4K 120 hertz refresh rate, 0.1 millisecond response time, two HDMI 2.1 ports, one display port, 1.4 port, 98% of the DCI-P3 color space. It does happen to have a brightness of 450 nits, which is good enough to qualify for the basic HDR. You just have to stomach
like the recommended retail price of 1,599 pounds. Here in the US, we're looking at roughly 1,500 US dollars. Is that worth it to you? Let me know down below in the comments, or what do you want more to make that price worth it? I wanna hear from you down below. And NVIDIA wants you to hear about Cyberpunk 2077 getting path tracing. This is gonna be discussed at GDC for implementing it into Cyberpunk as part of RT Overdrive. Path tracing is just a different way to get realistic reflections into the video game. They're presenting this on March 22nd as part of GDC because they want to talk about how game developers could potentially implement this moving forward. And with the fact that RTX is now available in roughly 400 different applications in games, getting one of the largest games to have ever come out on board with the latest features is a good way to entice other developers into it. Unless, of course, you were thinking that everybody's gonna be playing on an RTX 30 series card, cause that's done. RTX 30 series dead, my friends. It, at least it officially appears that way. Nvidia has not made any sort of announcement regarding this, but if you go to European sites, if you go to United States sites, or you go to other sites across the world, it looks like the RTX 30 series founders editions are just completely gone. We've already talked about this in a previous episode of Hot News that Best Buy did clearances on things like the 3070, 3080, 3080 Ti, and 3090 Ti, selling them for ridiculously low prices to get rid of the stock. I believe the 3070 went for $300 at one point. And at that point, the 3060 Ti and 3070 Ti were the only ones remaining. But it appears now that it's gone beyond the United States and it's elsewhere in the entire world where the Founders Editions are no longer being found. And if you go onto NVIDIA's website, you select the 30 series, you go to click on NVIDIA, it says none, but when you look at it, they do have Founders Editions. It just happens to be for the $1,200 and $1,600 RTX 4080 and 4090. NVIDIA looking like they're gonna be pushing us to the 40 series, even if they haven't given us a full replacement for all the 30 series. Those cards have been out for roughly two to two and a half years, depending on the model that you're looking at. Is it time? Kind of, but it's also not being replaced by anything, which is the hardest part. We're not getting anything reasonable to get rid of what was pastly there. I'd be more fine with it if we had a 4060 at like 300 bucks. That would be much better to me and much easier of a pill to swallow with the fact that they're getting rid of these cards. Does this bother you? Were you looking to pick up a Founders Edition in any of the 30 series? Let me know down below in the comments and I'll let you know that I'll be back here for more hot news tomorrow, my friends. See you then.